PPC is the public power corporation, they. It is the largest utility in Greece. It is, in fact, the biggest utility in Southeastern Europe with the acquisition of uh, the um, NL Romania. Uh, we're expanding, we are changing our energy mix uh, quite rapidly, uh, trying to follow the market trends. A, a significant part of what I'm going to say today is you know, how transition, how we feel the transition in, in the country and within the company, and um, where we're going to get there, um, and with what means, what are the tools, right. what, which of our tools are obsolete, Mm. And which of our tools are not are, are functional? I myself, um, I lead the conventional power generation part, which means that uh, whatever dispatchable unit needs to service this journey uh, falls under my responsibility. But the company has a very vast portfolio, and in any case, it is a, an extremely challenging period, um, especially in terms of. You know, climate change being a climate crisis at the point in time, and this is my personal opinion. That mm -hmm. okay, all these things took place because we we could foresee climate change, but then this caught up with us and it became climate crisis. So you know, the real content. It's often of what the way with crises, isn't it? Uh, we foresee them for ages, and then suddenly it's become a crisis. And I think uh, we in many we cases we ignore them. Yeah. At this point in time, we may have foreseen the crisis or called it, you know, climate change. Or some, some of us, you know, ignored it or denied it. Mm -hmm. But especially this year, we must accept that it's here. Okay. Well, I'm looking forward to hearing what you have to say about uh, PPC and its attempts to navigate the energy transition. So please, uh, please go ahead. So I, I have three things that I want to say. I want to be very brief because I've been here for some time and I, I mean, you should be exhausted yourself. <laughs> I'm beyond it. <laughs> so, so three things, that are the three topics on, on this agenda. Um, the journey of energy transition from t to 10 to today. Uh, what's the impact of climate crisis as we see it now? And uh, what's the role of dispatchable power plants that are there to ensure not only that, you know, the energy mix is satisfied in a way that is technically possible, but also to ensure security of supply. So, a couple of things. I mean, the system requirements as they are today um, are somehow governed by the... Sorry, the, could I just interrupt you? Could, could I ask everybody just to uh, keep, keep the conversation down for a second? Uh, sit down if you're near your seat. Um, and let's give uh, Alexis a proper hearing. Thanks very much. Go ahead. So, so we have system requirements that are, some of them are technical, some of them were created by mandate because decarbonization is a necessity, but there, there is a mandate that imposed it. So, so on one hand, decarbonization is what takes place and sustainable means are what are introduced, but at the same time, this introduced it introduces a very high demand on flexibility of dispatchable units and makes the system more vulnerable. So it, it requires somehow to, to improve the resilience of the system as it's being transformed. On the other hand, there is you know, a great need for energy security and we are lucky enough not to have incidents, but this is exactly what I said, lucky enough not to have incidents. Our northern neighbors had incidents this summer, blackouts. Yeah. Uh, and while all these things are happening, we must have an affordable system. So you understand that this is a challenge, and uh, in many cases I'm within experts that, sorry to say, cannot distinguish kilowatt hours from kilowatts. Mm -hmm. So. So we need to, to land this aircraft and make it realistic and approach this transformation in a way that uh, will make it secure and will we'll get to the target end state, which is you know, a clean, renewable mix. So uh, if you, we go back to 2010, uh, 2010, the, the evolution of the, the I mean, I'll just be very brief and I'll skip the slide quickly. Uh, but the idea is that if we go back to 2010, our energy mix consisted of about 45% coal, lignite, mm -hmm. and uh, about 5% of renewables. 
Today, we're sitting at about 40% renewables, and these are the official figures of IPTO. Of the, of the, uh, so we are sitting at 40% renewables, and around, how much is it? Less than 10% lignite. So at the same time, we have, 2010, we had 20% gas. Today, we're about at about 30% gas. And then you have something stable that is, this is, this is ha somehow misleading, and I will address it on the next slide. Um, hydro plants were about 10% of the mix, historically. Mm -hmm. Now they've reduced slightly, but we are looking, the bulk of our plants are reservoir plants. So this is not, this doesn't address drought. Drought, I will address drought in a, in a future slide, but uh, always this stable 10% of hydro plants um, was misleading and, and made everybody think on the energy part that weren't aware of real, you know, re real uh, facts regarding the water uptake of the re reservoirs that there is no drought issue. Everything was fine, and it's not. Mm -hmm. And it's not, this is not a transit of 2024. This is something that has been developing for the last 10, 15 years. We are on a stable deficit year by year. Uh, you will, I mean, I will address it in more detail uh, uh, very soon. So our mix, half of it was coal. Now a lot less is coal. And the reason for coal, lignite, uh, and the reason for this happening is the market. Mm -hmm. It's no longer viable. So, so the evolution of prices, MCP or CO2 prices or natural gas prices matches very well the way that this transformation of the proportions of the energy mix uh, has taken place. I mean, just observing that the prices, it all makes, it makes sense. And then um, we, I, I saw a graph from Bloomberg on the, on the upper right-hand side where we, we see a simulation of Greece hourly simulation for a year as 2040. And, and it, two things are very interesting. The magenta part, that is the, the, curtailment, the curtailment part, and the gray part, that is the dispatchable energy part. So dispatchable plants are going to be there. And dispatchable plants are going to need flexibility and resilience, not required, let's say, 10 years ago. The more, inf the more rest, the more renewables we have, the more demand there is on the performance of dispatchable plants. So we must ensure that technically they can cope and they, somebody pays for them. Mm -hmm. Because the market as we have them today, the way that it's transformed, cannot self-sustain the fleet that is required to do two things to produce for these integrals of the gaps that we see in the energy mix and to ensure security of supply. Security of supply means that you have a plant being available for 50 hours of operation per year. And since in Greece we experience these peaks due to tourism and the climate crisis and heat waves, we must be prepared to maintain the tools that we have in order to ensure security of supply. So if we go a bit more into the impact of the, of the climate crisis, we have the scarcity of natural resources and the main scarcity is water. Uh, we have transient demand patterns that are created by heat waves. Mm -hmm. And also this, if you, if you take under consideration the increased occupancy that we have during the summer months makes this even more intense. And, uh, of course, you have the disruption of energy supply because you have other transients, such huge waves and storms. Last November, we experienced such, such, such incidents that are very stressful for the energy system and very stressful for transmission, very stressful for distribution for everybody. So, just focusing on hydros, the loss on hydro generation this year is about one and a half terawatt hour compared to what happened 15 years ago and the drop is stable. So if somebody observes data, 
we can't deny that we, we knew it was coming. Mm -hmm. The second thing is that this year is the worst hydrological year of the, uh, the last 25 years. And the last one is that we have, we're entering the next hydrological year with 850 gigawatt hours less on our reservoirs. So what made the system not understanding the problem, which was the capacity that we held on the reservoirs, is not necessarily there this year. We have issues. We have issues, and the, the, the water utilities have issues. Water scarcity is here. And we are on the second year. In Spain, they are in the fifth year. Mm. So we must not ignore it, and we should act quickly. What does act mean? Sorry to interrupt you. Yeah, yeah, I think that it's better if we address the last issue okay. on the energy system. Let's do that. And, uh, and then we, we will go back on, on what ACT means. Yeah. Because giving a hint on my answer, if acting mean, mean, and it does mean infrastructure, uh, you understand that infrastructure, public procurement, design, coping with all these things takes decades. So we should act now and prepare an infrastructure for the future. And this is how I will address the issue uh, with this uh, uh, final slide. Now, as we discussed, the um, dispatchable plans that are there to do, uh, to, to, to create an environment of ensuring that power is there and cover for energy as much as they requ uh, it's required, today are of three types in Greece. One is obsolete. And I have it here, not because I want to, to present it in the energy mix, uh, because I want to have it printed on the minds of the audience that lignite is over. It's over because it's not economic, it's very low on efficiency, but it has not been designed to cope with the technical characteristics of the dispatchable units that we need today. So we have really something that we're you know, managing the end of its life cycle. And it's, it's absolutely certain that the less cycle of, of legal plants is a couple of years from today. Mm -hmm. uh, there are many issues that unfortunately cannot keep the plants as plants that are there to ensure security of supply or they are in reserve because coal and lignite plants are depending on mines. And you, can ha you cannot have a mine open mm -hmm. for redundancy. So, just to finish with this, our load factor last year was about 21% on the lignite plants. They were designed for 60. This year is about 11. Next year will be half. The year after will be none. Mm. And this is correct because, you know, every technology has its life cycle. It was designed for certain things and it's not required anymore. And uh, I'm going to the second part of dispatchable plants that is extremely interesting is hydro plants, hydro and PHS. We understand that, you know, drought creates issues, but the only way to cope is to put more effort in building more hydro and PHS. We don't have the flows, but we have the heads, which means that, you know, there is potential still in this country. On one, hard, on one part, to, to continue developing reservoir power plants, hydro power plants. On the other hand, to cope with the fact that, you know, the, the profile of the hydro plants is today to work as speaker units and complement this with open loop or cl closed loop PHS plants. And finally, natural gas. Natural gas, while we create the, second, the next generation hydro infrastructure, is really the only tool we have. So there is a diversified unit portfolio from many, from many entities. There are new units under construction. There are possibilities of upgrades. I mean, you understand that in, in, in natural gas, we can talk about reciprocate, from reciprocating engines to combined cycle plants. And all these things are very useful. Um, of course, because of the, volat uh, the volatility of the gas market, in many cases, if the, when prices are relatively low, plants are not profitable. Uh, we have this uncertainty of the utilization factor that, you know, for any business is an issue. So, 
So we have three technologies today. One is completely non-compatible with our needs, and two are compatible. And my key takeouts, and to conclude what I wanted to say in the position of our company, is that Lignite Energy has completed its life cycle, and it's projected, our generation is projected to, to reach zero by 2026, mid-2026 that new hydro plant plants and new pump hydro solar plants are mandatory to have a healthy mix and that we must ensure the economic viability of uh, natural gas power plants because for a long period of time they will be there to cover the gap. Right. Um, excellent. Well, thank you very much for that. And we, we have seconds really before, that, before yeah, our, yeah. Our, our, our next session. Um, but I would like to know, um, I mean, you, you said that the gas will be part of energy markets during the energy transition period and that the economic viability of natural gas power plants is inextricably linked to the market transformation mm -hmm. mechanism. What measures, uh, either from the private sector or regulators or governments, uh, should be taken to make sure that gas plants do remain viable during this period? Okay. I can um, somehow answer two ways. The first way is to, to find other means, apart from the market participation today, uh, to complement income. Uh, and this, in Mon I mean, this is the second part of the answer. This, in most cases around the European Union, is some sort of capacity mechanism. And otherwise, they will disappear. Mm -hmm. No business will maintain something that is on losses. So it is absolutely necessary for security of supply reasons to reconsider in great detail our needs for some capacity mechanism because uh, at this point in time it's, it's required and as lignite phase out takes place this gap will be visible because now it's not right okay fantastic thank you there's so much detail there and we could spend an awful lot more time oh, yeah, talking sure. about it time we don't have thank you join me in, in thanking our panelists please thank you very much <laughs>